Hello everyone. In this video, I want to go over the three application problems, one of which that you chose for your own, but I quickly just wanted to go over some of the solutions, the how to, the behind the scenes on how these are done. So the first one started with the number games, and this was probably the most, um, the po most popular choice, I suppose. A lot of you did choose this. Um, and you notice the pattern correctly, um, which is you're always gonna get stuck in this cycle of it basically ending with one if you wanna think about it like that, or it just basically keeps repeating. Once you get to one, um, obviously one is odd, it becomes four after you multiply it by three and add one, then you get four, two, one again, and you just get stuck in this um, ever repeating cycle, right? Looks like this. So forth. Um, and this is gonna happen regardless of any number you choose. Some of you just kind of went with 30 or maybe chose one other number. No matter what number you choose, this pattern is always gonna continue where um, it kind of cycles with the four, two, one. Basically you reach the stage of, I think it's around 16, and then 16 uh, keeps getting cut in half to four. Uh, and like we mentioned, it just keeps cycling through this. This is actually um, a very popular math problem. It's known as the Kolatz conjecture. Um, you can get really higher level with this in terms of proving like why it happens and stuff like that. Um, I think it's interesting how if we want to define them as how many moves it takes to get to the one. Like 30, I don't remember exactly off the top of my head, but it was a decent amount. Um, some are obviously a lot faster than others. If you choose like a nice uh, power of two, like if you choose 16 or if you choose 32, those are going to be pretty quick, obviously you're just going to keep chopping them in half until you get to one. Um, there's a really interesting one. Hopefully no one chose this, but if you choose the number 27, let me write some of the notes that I'm just kind of saying out loud here. Make sure I'm spelling it right. We got the Kolatz conjecture. So this is like the, the theorem of what's going on with this. And it's always going to end with this cycle of one, four, two, one, one, four, two, one, so forth. Um, but if you chose the number 27, 27 takes, take a guess before I say it, takes 111 steps. When I say step, like an actual, you know, 27, then becomes this, then it becomes that. There's 111 until you reach that uh, one, which is pretty crazy. You would think that like, oh, the bigger the number, the more moves, but there are large numbers that are kind of done very quickly. 27 isn't that large in the grand scheme of things. It takes 111 moves to uh, finish it off. So an interesting one there, this idea that the pattern just repeats. All right. This one was probably the second most popular. It's only three, so um, I would say. And I was happy to see a number of you that did choose option two, had the correct idea. Um, it can be a little frustrating trying to figure it out. I know we went over, obviously, a one by one is just one. We talked about, hey, it's not the obvious of there's just four rectangles in the two by two because you can look at different portions of it. Yeah, you can look at the four boxes, but you can also look at a one by two going sideways, a one by two going vertically, and obviously the entire shape. Even a three by three, there's probably not enough information right there to come up with a pattern. You can't go, oh, one, nine, so I think the next one's going to be you know 17 or something like that. Um, you probably have to actually do the three by three. So this is rather unfortunate, and more than likely, I'm gonna forget some as we're going along the way here, but obviously we have our first, um, the individual, like little one-by-ones, we'll call them, and there are nine of them. We have the entire shape. I'll just call that three by three, I guess, so that's one, and this is where it starts to get tricky, okay. Um, Two by ones, we have one and two. So every level here kind of has two going horizontally. You could start in the middle and go to the right. You could start on the left, go to the middle. So all together, that's going to be um, two, four, six. Uh, one by two, I guess we we'll call it. There's six. And very similarly, if we want to call it a two by one now going this way, we'll also have the same idea. Okay. Um, one by threes. 
Obviously, we have three going horizontally and three going vertically. Okay, um, what else we got here? Um, two by twos. So we have like the little blocks that we had in the second step. We have one, we have two, we have three, and we have four. All together we have four of them. Uh, two by twos, we have four. Okay, we're getting there. What are we up to so far? So if we tally up what we have so far, we have 10 plus 12, we have 22, plus six is 28, plus four is 32. All right, so I think the only thing we're missing is the two by threes. These are tough to see, people usually forget these. That would be this guy, that's a rectangle. There's another one beside it. And then the other direction as well. So going this way and going this way. So two by three all together, there's four. Two by three or three by two, there's two of each. And all together that should be four, eight, six is 14 plus 12, 26 plus 10. There are 36 here, okay. So we have in a one by one, we had one. In a two by two, we had nine. And in a three by three, we had 36. Now some of you in your videos mentioned like, hey, I couldn't figure it out and I had to look it up. That's fine. Um, but maybe you notice here the idea that all of these were perfect squares so far. One is a perfect square, nine is a perfect square. That might help. One I could write as one squared. Nine I could write as three squared. 36 I could write as six squared. Okay. This makes it a little bit clearer to see the pattern. So what happened between the first and second iteration? We added two to the base, the thing being squared, right? And we went from one to three. So going from the second to the third, we added three. And this is where you can kind of predict the pattern and ends up holding up. We'd add four for the four by four to make it 10 squared. So four by four would have 100. This question asks for a five by five, remember? So a five by five should add another five to the base, making it 15 squared for a grand total of 225 rectangles. You definitely don't wanna count those, um, but that's the explanation on option two. And last one, this is another one where um, I like to give this sometimes when I'm like subbing for a class just to if there's no work or something to keep the keep everyone guessing and people usually give up or very rarely do people figure this one out because the trick happens in the very first move. The very first move here is to um, actually start at the very end. So this is a work backwards problem. If you start in the beginning, guess and check, drawing diagrams, all that stuff, it's virtually impossible. Maybe you get lucky guessing, but very, very difficult. It's very simple to work backwards. Okay. So let's see what I mean. Um, on the final day, he rode five miles. So we have five. Um, on day five, he cycled two thirds. So of what was remaining. So that means the five miles was one third, right? Because he left a third and he, we know that was actually five. So what, how far did he go on day five? If he did two thirds and the one third was five, the two thirds should be 10. It kind of makes sense, right? Just looking at day five and day six so far. He, he, let's say at the start on day five, he had 15 miles left. He did two thirds of it, which was 10. And then there's five miles left. It checks out so far. Okay, day four, we have another 10 miles. Keep kind of like a running total as well. So we have 25. Um, on day three, he wrote three quarters. Using the same logic that we did for day, uh, day five, that means 25 miles, which is our running total so far, was one quarter, which means three quarters would be 75, right? This was the one quarter that he left over, so the three quarters would be 75 miles on day three. On day two, he rode half, 
That means that all this stuff that he did so far is also half, which is just 100, which means on um, day two, he did 100 miles. And on day one, same thing there. He did half again. So what are, our running total is 200, which means on day one, he actually did 200 miles as well. And if you tally all these up, we should get 400 miles. So the trick here, working backwards, um, if I say something like, hey, he left a quarter, um, you can figure out what the other part that he actually did is, very simply. Okay. Like I mentioned, this is difficult if you try to go forward. I don't even know if there is a real way of doing it other than, like I said, just getting very lucky with guesses. Um, but if, when you do it backwards, it's actually quite simple. So these were the solutions for the three investigations that you guys looked at for homework and in your flip grids. The videos that I've been looking at thus far have been uh, excellent, very, very good explanations for some of these. Some of them mentioned like, hey, I did have to consult or look something or research something up. That's perfectly fine. Uh, hopefully, these explanations that I'm providing in this video helped clear up any confusions that you still did have. Thank you guys for watching this, and as always, have a great day. Take care.